My name is Katie Oliviero. I am the postdoctoral fellow with the Feminism and Legal Theory Project and the Vulnerability and Human Condition Initiative. And I've been here between 2010 and 2012. So I have a PhD in women's studies from UCLA and I also do my BA in women's studies um, and actually between college and my doctoral program I taught for several years so I was a high school English teacher and I taught sophomores through seniors um, which was a very wonderful time in my life. So my work uh, pulls together a couple different areas of inquiry and so part, part of it is transnational feminisms and queer and critical race studies and then I use methodology, methodologies from law, social movements and cultural studies. Well, so very broadly, um, I think a lot of people who do work in gender studies are really are interested in how we make people count by the way that we count them and the cultural and legal and institutional mechanisms by which some people come to matter more than others. And I read Martha Feynman's work on vulnerability in around 2009 when I was starting to think about what I wanted to do for a dissertation topic. And um, I combined her work with that of Judith Butler and quite a few queer of color feminists um, who I thought were really looking at this question of how we make people count. And what the vulnerability paradigm brings and what this postdoc brings is it allows us to start thinking through how vulnerability and resilience can help us um, reorient what we consider justice, uh, re reorient how we address people's needs and their capabilities over time. And so that is the primary reason that I wanted to work here and it dovetailed very well with my dissertation work um, because my dissertation was looking at what I call the visual culture of vulnerability. And so I was looking at how we use represent, representational tactics and how we, resent, how we represent vulnerability or suffering or pain or risk. And I wanted to look at how that, look, how that interfaces with public policy. And so I actually ended up looking at how conservative movements represent questions of vulnerability um, because they have had over time, um, and particularly in the past century, a huge amount of success um, making claims of being threatened and, uh, and at risk and then using that to influence public policy. So I looked at controversies over immigration, gay rights, and abortion. Um, and one of the things I was examining is I was looking at how more sensationalist opposition to something like immigration or same-sex marriage or abortion, I was looking at how that actually might reflect many more mainstream ideals that we might see in the law. So I would take a group like the Minutemen, which are civilians and monitor the southern border, um, and one of the reasons they're doing that is they're, they're saying that the federal government is neglecting this immigration morass that we have. And actually there's wide-scale agreement that that occurs. But then I look at how their specific discourse of being threatened, um, how that actually is reflecting in, uh, reflected in all these laws we have that are restricting migrants' rights, whether it's in Georgia or Arizona. Um, or Alabama right now. And so then I looked at that with other areas like um, opposition to same-sex marriage in California, um, who that campaign actually primarily targeted children of color, saying that gay rights and gay marriage threatened that particularly vulnerable population. And I also looked at billboard campaigns that compare abortion with racial genocide because they're taking a very a well-established um, anti-racist approach of looking at these diffuse roots of racism um, and then they're using that to make this very troubling equation um, that distorts quite a bit of information. Well, one of the reasons that I wanted to work here um, in the law school in particular is I wanted to very much sharpen my lens on the law and policy. Because I was looking at a visual culture of vulnerability, I was looking at the political culture of vulnerability. But this allowed me to think through in a much more direct way how that visual culture um, translates into the law very specifically. Um, and so you could see it in 
the, some of the judicial reasoning, for instance, that would reject same-sex marriage, and they would talk about the threat that it poses to children, um, to families. So it might be very literal, as we see there. Um, it might be much more diffuse as well when we look at how, um, how citizenship is transmitted to kids that are born abroad to unmarried parents um, and their father is the American citizen. Um, the idea that those kids don't, aren't quite American, no matter how long they've lived here, um, is something that gets represented visually, but then it's actually you know, written in the law itself, um, and it's very much being revised as we speak. But the privilege of being here was very much focusing on that legal component and getting to speak with the variety of experts in those areas to help me sharpen my analysis. Well, I mean, I think there's two areas. I mean, one in terms of um, places where I think the vulnerability and resilience paradigms are very, ha have a rich, um, very unexplored potential um, has to do with development. Um, and that's not my area of expertise, but it's something that I want to see uh, explored and studied more um, by people who have um, that, that, that skill set and that practical experience as well. Um, I think in the environment is another area. In my own work, I'm actually looking at it in terms of disability, in terms of um, peace movements eventually, and I'm looking at asylum law. So those are some of the spaces. In terms of the concepts themselves, um, one of the things that unites the frameworks of vulnerability that are coming out of critical legal theory and those that are coming out of cultural studies is this idea that it can very strongly reorient our social justice frameworks. And one of the things I'm interested in is the fact that I think that reorientation operates simultaneously with the fact that vulnerability is a fabulous condition to actually exacerbate situations of violence. Um, it is the primary justification historically for which we have gone to war. Um, it's, it's to save our own country, to rescue people in the post 9-11 era, we very much strong, we very much saw it in terms of a rhetoric of rescuing women, um, rescuing these, um, these people from backward and authoritative political regimes. And so I think the paradigms, we really need to look at how those operate in tandem. And that's not at all to say that a, the progressive and expansion, expansive potential for vulnerability and resilience paradigms doesn't exist, but just that there's multiple forces that work together. And if we at least look at how vulnerability gets used to actually exacerbate violence, I think we can have a better understanding of what it looks like um, on the level of international law, on the level of domestic policy, to, to incorporate vulnerability in ways that actually don't create as many of those problems. I think the gem on all of it is that I had the opportunity to teach at the graduate level and to teach in two very different arenas. So I taught in the law school and I also taught in the doctoral program in women and gender studies at Emory, which is one of the oldest doctoral programs in the country. And the course I taught there was on vulnerability and biopolitics and feminism. And it was a wonderful um, capstone and transition to finishing my doctoral work and moving into um, the, my role of being a professor. Um, and then I, it was a thrill also to teach law students and to teach feminist legal theory in which I taught components of to undergraduates, to, but to teach it to professional students who were very much strongly thinking about the applied nature of these ideas. Um, and which one of the privileges of being a teacher is to um, have your own presumptions challenged and to rethink how you teach. And then the postdoc afforded the opportunity to meet a variety of different scholars interested in these areas. Um, I had a hand in organizing and conceptualizing some of those workshops. And I, we did one on manipulating vulnerability, one on resilience, and my final ones on identity, on vulnerability and identity. So I think that'll be a good capstone and closure for my time here. So I am going to the University of Colorado at Boulder, 
and I'll be a visiting assistant professor there um, through this wonderful organization called the American Council of Learned Societies. If you are watching this, look at their website and apply. Um, and so I'll be teaching in the Women and Gender Studies program there. And part of what I'll be doing is introducing the vulnerability paradigm to both my undergraduate students and to the graduate students. Um, they're, they're developing an MA and PhD program in global gender studies that is both trying to generate new scholarship in gender studies, but it's also thinking through some of the more applied components of the field. And so um, it, the University of Colorado has the highest Peace Corps um, enrollment rate. And so it's introducing some of those ideas to these people who are going out in the world and doing very impressive, important work. Um, but we can also provide different lenses to think through what the ramifications of that work are. And then the final piece is um, we are developing an MA and JD program there. And so part there, there's a very strong critical legal studies program. Um, and I think the vulnerability paradigm, because it cr grows out of critical legal studies, will be something that will be an innovative addition. Well, so I have, I published a piece on immigration and vulnerability um, in Signs in, um, in the summer of 2011. I have a piece coming out on same-sex marriage opposition and vulnerability that will be published in an anthology this summer. And then I have three articles that should be going out for review very soon. <laughs> um, and one is looking at um, birthright citizenship revisions and um, the deportation policies around mixed citizenship status families. And I have another one looking at undocumented students. Um, and then pushing forward some of my um, future research um, has to do with global disability studies. And I'm also looking at asylum law. So I'm looking at some pieces around sexual, around as asylum for gender identity and sexual orientation, looking at how frameworks of vulnerability and rescue are configured. And so those will hopefully be out sometime in the summer of 2013. And of course, I'm revising my dissertation into a book. And so I hope to see that out before 2014. You're never going to get rid of me. <laughs> See, the other side of vulnerability is resilience, and we snap back and we return. Thank you for my time here. <laughs>